only it was that easy. Most of my videos are heavily focused on how to break into the data science career path. In my mind, one of the most effective ways to become a data scientist is to start as a data analyst. Data analyst work and data science work is relatively similar, so you'll learn useful skills and also accumulate practical knowledge for making the switch. First, I wanna make it clear that a data science role isn't better than a data analyst role. It's simply a position that leverages a slightly different set of skills. Many people, including my friend Alex the Analyst, prefer the data analyst life. I think that data science may be more suited for you if you enjoy coding more. Many analysts code, but they leverage other tools like Tableau and Power BI as well. Honestly, data science positions are still rather poorly defined compared to data analyst roles, so if you're okay with some ambiguity, that work could also be suited for you more. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, these are some of my practical tips for making the transition from data analyst to data scientist. My first tip is to show employers that you can code. As I mentioned before, data analysts generally program slightly less than data scientists. If you want to make the transition into data science, you should find ways to showcase your programming ability in Python or R. The best way to do this is with a portfolio on either GitHub or Kaggle.com. For someone with an analyst background, building an end-to-end -end project is also going to be extremely valuable. I have a few of my videos on projects that I've linked in the card in the top right and below in the description section. The next thing you should do is to highlight your strengths. Data analysts often have high levels of business understanding and logic. You shouldn't try to hide this. Many hiring managers are actually looking for that skill set if you check the box for coding ability. Make sure your resume shows the type of value that you've been creating at your current company or in your projects. Also, make sure to tell these stories during your actual interviews. The third thing I recommend is to look for opportunities to practice data science in your current job. Although you're an analyst, you still have access to data. It never hurt to go a little above and beyond to experiment with some more advanced algorithms. It might take a little extra time, but you should definitely try to share these things with your manager or with data science teams. That's assuming you're doing a great job with your regular work as well. I also think this is a great time for me to bring up this video sponsor, and that sponsor is myself and the Ken's Nearest Neighbors podcast. In my episode next week, I interview my friend Brennan, who talks about how he transitioned into a data analyst role from one in finance. Although his transition wasn't into data science per se, the method he used would work for you as well, going from a data analyst to a data scientist. In his finance role, he asked the data teams if they needed help with any offhand work, and he also asked for their advice on how they'd analyze the finance problems that he was working on. He got to know the team, and when a position came up, he applied for it. The team knew him already, so it was a lot easier for him to land this position. There are plenty of great stories like this and more on the KNN podcast, which I've linked in the description, and we have new episodes every Wednesday. Now, moving back to data analyst to data scientist, I personally think continued education in the form of certificates or university programs is a great way to learn data science concepts. But I don't have much faith in them helping you to land a job. The exception would maybe be a master's degree, but these can be very expensive and time consuming, and I've made plenty of other resources on if you should pursue that route or not. I don't think it's for most people, but it could be useful to some. If you feel the bottleneck for you to go from data analyst to data scientist is knowledge, I highly recommend getting educated on your company's dime. Many companies offer a stipend for learning resources or internal resources for teaching new skills. Ask your manager or ask HR about some of the ways that you can get upskilled within your organization. Of course, there are plenty of great free resources and certificates like Kaggle and 365 Data Science that are affordable if your company isn't willing to cover the cost. While we're talking about your current work, by far, the best place for you to land a new data science position is at your current company. One of the things that I've learned from doing so many podcast interviews over time is that it almost never hurts to ask about the roles you're interested in at a company. My friend Tina even did this in her internship at Goldman Sachs. She landed a software engineering internship, and after she got the position, she asked if she could work with the data science team instead. Guess what? They actually let her. The video where we talk about that is linked below. 
To that point, most companies have internal job boards that give you the option to apply for a new role even before the position opens to the public. The overhead of hiring someone who's already employed at a company is a lot lower, so this can really work in your favor. I highly recommend that you learn about resources and the opportunities within your current company. If you've tried all the things that I've mentioned earlier, and I mean like really tried them, then it probably makes sense for you to look outside of your current company. To do that, I recommend leveraging your existing network. You have connections through friends, through your university, through your various interest groups that you're a part of, and there's plenty of great resources to join online. If you feel like you don't have a good network, I think you should go to meetups when it's safe again, or find communities online that you can engage with. You'd be shocked at how many opportunities you find when you're talking with or when you're just around like-minded people. These communities are also an incredible place to develop your skills further. There's a double benefit. Well, that's it for my tips for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I also hope that it helps you to break into the data science field. Again, if you haven't checked out the podcast, Ken's Nearest Neighbors, please do. And until next time, thank you for watching and good luck on your data science journey.